now thanks for checking out chriscato.com this is the second part in the database development series t sequels 0 to 60 this is the design view versus the query window all this content is available at this tiny url slash cato t sequel there's my twitter and my home page On that tiny URL, it'll take you where you can download the whole script, over 600 lines of T-SQL code. That way you could execute it yourself and help you learn better. Here we're going to compare the design view versus the query editor window. The design view is great, especially when you're starting off or if you want a more graphical user interface. It's good, especially when you're working with tables and building queries. The query editor window is Excellent. It's a little more powerful. It's all text, though, and you could execute your scripts there. So in the design view, it's great for creating and altering tables, as I said. Here's an image where you can see that you can create a table. Building queries. You can also build queries in the design view, and there's four different panes. The diagram, the criteria, the SQL, and the results pane. The query editor window is a little more simple. It's basically just a text window. It's great. Uh, it's broken up into the query window usually at the top and the results w window at the bottom. You can execute F5 or you can parse the window by control 5. You can execute only a selected area of text if you wish by highlighting the text or you could do run the script in the whole window uh, you could uh, we can also script tables procedures indexes so let's take a look in here all right now we're in the query window and we are going to use first what we're going to do is we're going to use the query window and we're going to create some tables and a query and edit, alter that table then we're going to go into the design view and we're going to accomplish those same tasks so we're going to accomplish the same task by two different ways through the query window and the design view okay here we're going to create a table okay we just created a table which is the roles table now you see that that roles table is there What's another way we could create a table? We could right click on that tables node, go to new table, and I'll say this will be the roles in. So um, roles is in ID, and here I'm going to use a Okay, so we just got a little basic uh, table, okay? So now I'm going to close that window, and it's going to prompt me. So I could say uh, roles is in, and I'm just naming this table here. Now it closes it. If we look at Object Explorer, and there's that table. So we just created the table via a script, all this or in the design view. If we go back to the design view, here if you notice in the script, we put a primary key on there. You could also put a primary key in the design view. Here we could right click, set as primary key. If we wanted to add a column, say uh, an active bit, we could. So there we just added a column to that table. Now we have three columns. That active column is there now. So here let's alter the existing the roles table via script. F5 executed. Now on that roles table we added ID. 
Now if you notice, so now we just added a column in the script and also in the design view. There's only one primary key on that table. Let's add a non-clustered index. That's the script. Now we go here and we just added a non-clustered index. Nice via script. Can we do that in the design view? Sure. Let's right click new index and it'll be a non-clustered index. Let's use it on the uh, roll name. And we'll use the roll name to put this non-clustered index on. And there we have it. So we just added an index via the script and also in the design view. I'm just going to insert some records in this table here. Okay. So now here's a script where we could select data. Here's another script where we could select data. We could count them. Okay, so obviously we could select data with a script in the query window. How could we select these values where the application ID equals 1 and the role ID equals 1 if we wanted to in the design view? Okay, let's go to roles. So I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to edit. This is in Management Studio 2005 or 2008. Now I'm going to hit Control 1, 2, 3. Or you could right click, go to Panes, and make sure they're all checked. So now once I have that, then I could hit Control R or Execute to, to run them. So here we have two of those. We have two of those, but we only want we want this. We want this query where we're only selecting one, where application ID equals one. So we want application ID equals one. Oops, that was not application ID. Application ID equals one and role ID equals one. So look at that. That built the query for us. Now if we execute it, we're only getting the one row. It's an example of how we're using the query editor window to build the query. Now let's count the total records. So say if we wanted to count the total records, we could have a group by and go to count. I don't care about the filter right now. see we could build two records see so we could build that count statement in the design view or we could just have a query in the query window so here we really examine the differences between the design view and the query editor window I thank you for watching and Look forward to the next part, part three, stored procedures.